8.05 p.m. Uh, let me see. I have the agenda right here. Do we have Nita with us? Oh, no, oh. not yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't see anything either. No. Uh, so, let me see. We'll uh, do the minutes. Um, does anybody want to read the minutes from uh, last month? Do you want me to read them? Sure. That, that would be great. Okay. <clears throat> Shall I go? What? Is it okay if anybody else shows up? Oh, oh, okay. Um, All right. I'm reading the minutes, I guess. Thank you. Library trustee minutes meeting uh, meeting minutes, <laughs> July 9th, 2024. Meeting call to order at 6.02. Present, Director Jen Crosby, Chair Paul Bolio, Burnett Archambault, Jennifer Chauvin, Denise Conti, Helen Hurto, Michelle Petrus, and Candice Ribeiro. Absent, Nita Abbott and Kate Mercia. Minutes of last month's trustee meeting, meeting were accepted as amended with a motion by Candice, seconded by Denise. All in favor. Director's report. Building update, <clears throat> a section of shelving in the children's room was stabilized due to wobbling. Also, the pump for the fountain in Alice's garden is not working. Lou Barry notified and tried a few things, but unable to get it working again. Helen to check with class graphs to see if anyone there can address the issue as they do market fish ponds and fountains. Also to check with James White, with White Hollow Landscaping for a possible resource. Operations update. Summer reading program is in full swing. ARIS report has started. ARIS is a report of usage and statistics. It is due in August. Community survey. The survey is almost ready to go live. Jen has applied for tax exemption through SurveyMonkey to upgrade our plan at organization pricing to get the survey live. Questions on the survey will cover what direction the patrons would like to see the library moving, types of programs, facilities. It will be available in print form and online through social media and email. Jen will send out ahead of time to trustees for a test run to make sure everything is working. The information received from this survey will help to write the library's five-year plan. The new plaque in memory of long-standing library trustees was presented. Renee C. Still is the first and only name at this time. Friends update. Book sale coming in September. Donations are now being accepted in manageable amounts. Jen reports the friends have been very active there is an increased fundraising and they have a new PR person for publicity and exposure. Current statistics update. The circulation for June 2024 was 5,146. Total network transfers were 3,602. 557 items received and 3,044 items sent. The library saved the townspeople 67,000. This is a definite increase over the past months. Warrants. $1,928.40 to Demco, Baker and Taylor. $3,348.02 Tech MD, Dorenzi Business Technologies. Go next speed, go next speed. Baker and Taylor, the library store, Midwest Tape. Motion made by Jennifer Chauvin to accept and sign warrant, seconded by Helen. All in favor. Other. The review of the duties and responsibilities of the Granby Public Library Board of Trustees. Discussion held on the length of terms of the chair and vice chair. Presently set at two years with the understanding that the vice chair would move into the office of the chair for a smooth transition. Pros and cons of a longer term for each were discussed and board voted to accept the present duties 
responsibilities and terms is laid out, no changes. Motion made by Candace, seconded by Denise. All in favor. Jen received a phone call and a follow-up letter from the chairperson of Granby's Democratic Town Committee, requesting that their monthly meetings, which are held at the library, be posted on the library calendar, which is on the library website. Up to this point, only the library-sponsored events have been posted on this calendar. Discussion held, and it was decided that if the library posts this meeting slash event, all should be post. All sh should be posted. Jen is agreeable to a trial period, as this is extra work on her part, and will amend the application for library use to include the posting or not. Motion made by Helen to offer outside groups a posting on the library calendar on a trial basis, seconded by Denise. Meeting adjourned at 7.01, next meeting August 13th, 2024, at 6 p.m. Respectfully submitted, Michelle Peters, reporting secretary. Nice job. <laughs> the only thing I saw was uh, under other responsibilities, um, about six lines down, you think me. What, what? There were a couple of rogue um, commas in the warrants as well, which I can, um, can go ahead and fix for Michelle as well. Yeah, I only saw one um, um, in the, Jen received a phone call and a follow-up letter from the, um, that, that paragraph, uh, the library is used to include the posting or not. Oh, wait, no, um, um, no, it was, a, it was the last line. A posting on the library calendar on a trial basis, and I figured a comma, seconded by Denise. Okay. I know it's something trivial. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, that's fine. Right. Okay. Uh, anybody want to make a motion to um, accept the minutes as amended? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so you must have a lot on your director's report to <laughs> talk about. I have a few things to discuss. Um, okay, so my building update, the air conditioning dehumidi dehumidifying unit was fixed once again. Um, then the building is freezing now because it's working really, really well. Um, it was pushing out 64 degree air today, um, but there's still something amiss seeing as it was 58 in the conference room and 63 in the great hall um but jeremy was able to come in and, and turn the um, boilers on that will hopefully assist with that he said it would just take a few hours so we're we'll waiting on that um fire detection systems installed a new m2m on the fire alarm we were getting constant trouble signals um, this is the unit that relays the alarm information from the building to the companies involved, so like the, the monitoring company. Um, and it was tripping constantly, so they just replaced that, so now we should be sending constant trouble signals to the fire department. Uh, the town has a new IT company called Entree Technologies. They are out of West Springfield. They came in and replaced our outdated firewall and our Wi-Fi routers. The company workers are super nice, very knowledgeable when it comes to public libraries, which I found very helpful. They understood what CW Mars was. That's great. Um, that no. was really comforting to know that I didn't have to explain this to um, people when their job is to know more than I do about these things. So I'm very grateful for them. They were super nice. Um, we'll be working with them in the future. On our operations update, our summer reading programs are ending this week. If you have any adult summer reading um, bingo sheets out, you can bring them in um, by Friday. Our book sales gearing up. We're taking donations until the 29th of this month, and that starts on September 3rd. 
The library has been getting some press recognition, which is wonderful. We had our Messages from the Other Side program here last month with Lisa Lano, which we had an article about that. I did an interview with a reminder about our book sale. Um, they're going to do an article about that. And they're also going to run an article about the school supply drive that we have been hosting here, run by our local NHS student, Austin Smith. He's been doing um, a supply drive, and he asked to have a spot here for people to donate. And um, Representative Mindy Dom came in with donations for it, so we had a little photo op, me and her. Um, oh, that looked nice. I sent that over to the reminder, too, so they're going to do a little something about that as well. And then um, GCAM visited um, when we had our book group night and did an interest piece on it, including an interview with me. I don't know what it sounds like. I don't know if it's any good, but it's out there. <laughs> it's out there in the world. It's fun. We're watching GCAM. Hollywood's calling you, Jenny. <laughs> 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 I have no idea if I sounded like a bumbling idiot, but I did it. That's all that matters. Um, the community survey that I've been working on so hard, um, <laughs> we're actually putting it on hold. I reached out to the MBLC to talk about dates and you know the long range planning and everything. And he called me and was like, Jen, that's not due until 2026. I said, oh, okay. It started in 2026, so it's due technically in 2025. So I wasn't super far off. But I was about a year early in that, so it's okay. still in the works. So we're still planning on doing the survey. We might just put it on hold for a little while so we can get more accurate information closer to that time frame. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, I guess I was ahead of myself, which is sometimes nice to hear. Um, oh, Nita is joining us. Beautiful. We'll add her in, Nita via. Oh, my God. Zoom. Hi, Nita. Hello, Anita. Hi. I'm actually in the library right now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, let me see. And then the ethics training, I spoke with Kathy. She said it's due every two years. Our new members who aren't here tonight will need to get on board and do it right away. Everyone else can sign up with a login and password with that info that I sent you. Um, and then every year at this time, you'll get a reminder to log in either to complete the training or to verify that you received the ethics information for that year. Hopefully they'll send all the reminders so that Kathy doesn't have to keep reminding us. Oh, so the reminder's gonna come every year? So you'll probably get like an email every year that oh. says, hey, here's the updated info. Well, it says that you need to complete something every year and then something every other year. It's kind of like a receipt that you yeah. got the information every other year and then the opposite year okay. you would have to actually take the training. So if we go in, log in, they should know where we're at because I can't remember when yeah, I it should, is. Okay. It should have the updated information. Okay. If for some reason it doesn't, let me know and I okay. can have Kathy send me the date of when you last completed yours. She mm -hmm. has that all on file. So this should be done within the next month or so? Say, yeah, the next month. Um, try to get it done. Did anybody week. else get the email? Mm -hmm. it, it didn't say you need to do this. It was just kind of like an ethics training and I thought it was one of those it kind was, of just junk mail today. kind of things. So I reached out to Jen. This was a bit ago. Oh, because um, I've done this when I so it ran again just not in May or whatever it was. So then yeah, you're, so you're all set. Yeah, that's yeah. the same thing, I yeah. guess. Yeah. So you're all set. This makes it easier because now you don't have to print it and right. fight with you know getting that document over to Kathy. It'll just automatically update your, your, your file. Info okay. And, the state. Um, and it's really useful information too. Yeah. Yeah. It's really that's where they ask you questions, right? Yeah. And then you yeah. have to choose. take a yeah. test. Yeah. 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 I did that. Yeah. I yeah. took a copy of the same song. Um, I don't imagine that the info changes a whole lot year to year, but then again, I don't know that. Um, okay, so I've got that out. If you could just make a note to try to get yourself logged in and figure out where you're at. If you have any trouble with it, let me know. Um, 
My friends update, our book sale is coming. I already said that. Donations being accepted until August 29th. We have quite a bit now, so that's good. Everything is brand new. Everything from the last sale was taken away, so this will be an all fresh, brand new book sale. Uh, okay, and then I have my heiress report was due. I submitted it last week. We got it signed and sent out between me and Paula. Um, so I wanted to give everybody, I didn't want to send it out because it was 25 pages and it's a lot, it's not really like the most reader friendly. Um, so I figured I would write some trends and read them to everyone to kind of give an overview. And if you had any questions, we could talk about the form. Um, so basically this is the um, report that I send to the state every year of all of our statistics. It shows what we have in the building, what we circulate, what programs we have, like the number of people that come in the building, the number of reference transactions, basically our usage and our holdings for the year. The adult print holdings was slightly increased. Our print periodicals, which are our magazines, was slightly down um, due to less magazines being purchased. People aren't really taking out physical magazines as much. Um, audio and video were both slightly down due to leading and less demand. And our e-books and our downloadable audio both went way up because people are really super big into the um, online stuff. Our young adult and children's holdings went slightly down due to our reading project where we got rid of all of our what we call dusty books that haven't circulated. Our e-books and our downloadable audio both went up also in those categories. The circulation of adult print books went up by almost a thousand checkouts this year. Our print periodicals was down. Audio circulation was up about 180 circulations, so not a ton. The video circulation was up by about 466. Our ebooks went down slightly since last year, but the downloadable audio took off with 518 more circulations than the previous year. And our miscellaneous stuff, our museum passes, our hotspots, those all went up by 50 circulations. So for the most part, everything trending upward. Um, young adult print circulation went up by 487. Print period periodicals went from 17 to 62 due to us offering more this year than we did the year before. Our audio circulations went up to 78 from 31. So not a lot, but um, better. Our ebooks and downloadable audio stayed about the same for teens. The children's print circulation went up by 1,149 circulations. Print per periodicals was down. Audio circulation went up by 169. The video went up by 278. The ebooks were slightly down, but downloadable audio for children also went up. So it's kind of interesting to see like the ebooks are becoming like a little less popular, but the audio, downloadable audio, has seemed to really people are listening to a lot these days which yeah. is kind of cool to see that trend happening on the usage of our databases and online learning platforms went up from 2800 to 15,000 almost 16,000 um, this includes our mango language learning the hoopla which is a big one scholastic teachables ancestry and heritage quest so all of the things that we pay for here on our local level went up by a ton, um, which is really exciting to see that happen. Um, I think Hoopla is our biggest, <laughs> our biggest one there. We went on, um, when we first started using Hoopla, it cost the library between 50 and $75 a month, and it has gone up to about $350 per month with the usage wow. we've had. It's wow. been incredible to see. A little scary sometimes, but we have the grant funding. You know, the money's okay. there, so. Yeah. It's not that big of a deal. I want to kind of watch it and make sure it doesn't go much over that because then we probably have to tap the brakes a little bit. But for right now, we're kind of, I'm just glad to see people using it. So we're okay. Yeah, it's nice to see people utilizing uh, the things that the library has to offer. Yeah. Can I ask about Libby? Is that part yes. of it? Yes. Libby is part of the let me see. So the adult circulation, the ebooks, and downloadable audio in our network is um, 
the holdings on that went way up because they have purchased a lot more. The circulations, that's the one where the ebook circulation was a little bit down, but the audio circulation was a lot up. Um, that came from CW Mars and those statistics as well from the Libby app. So Libby app also still getting a ton of usage. I find that because there are a lot of really long wait times, people would rather go over to Hoopla because you don't have to wait. So oh. that's the only down part of Libby is that people do get kind of frustrated when you find out your number is 76 in line for you know a book that CW Mars only has two copies of in the system. Hmm. Um, gets a little disappointing, you know, so you go over to Hoopla and they've got it right away and you're like, oh, okay. And so um, it makes sense that people would be um, kind of gravitating toward that one. The um, interlibrary lending went up in both borrowing and lending, probably between 600 and 700 items each. Our non-resident circulation went from 24,000 to 27,000. Wow. So definitely servicing a lot um, outside our community, mm -hmm. which is okay because we get an offset cost, um, an offset grant for that. So I always tell you people, you know, don't worry too much about other patrons from other libraries using us because it's a good thing for us. We get more money, we get better books, we get, you know, mm -hmm. we can afford to pay for the hoopla that way. So it's it's all, you know, we're we're doing really great in our community. I try to remind everybody it's community wide. Um, Overall, everything is looking up. Our trends seem to be leaning toward online usage, but our print materials are still going strong. People are using the library like never before. Yeah, it's, it's, it's exhausting, but it's amazing. <laughs> so the one thing you said that we were down in was the young children's magazines. Uh, I forget what yeah, you so termed it. Yeah, the magazines it. aren't really... So like, what kinds of magazines are the young children's? We get the um, like the National Geographic kids, Ranger Rick, Ranger Rick, okay. Nat Geo Little Kids. Okay. Um, the, I think the the main drawback with those is that they're very flimsy and they are prone to getting ripped, yeah. torn, you know, ruined very easily. And I feel like a lot of parents of younger children aren't going to gravitate as much to those because they don't want to have to then owe the library money mm -hmm. because their little kids ripped it or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, but like the teen circulations went up mm -hmm. and we, we've been offering more um, in the way of the teen ones. So uh, sometimes it's just kind of like the ebb and flow of what people are looking for. Right. I found that the, the beginning of like opening after COVID, nobody was looking for audiobooks anymore because everyone found Libby and Hoopla and they were like, oh, this is great. I don't even have to get CDs anymore. And it was like, wait, but what about our CD collection? Mm -hmm. um, and so that kind of oh. took a little bit of a nosedive, but um, it has since come up, so well, I'm really not that much of a worry. Because I find whenever something is kind of lacking, we're increasing in other places. So yeah, it really. Um, How do you track the number of people? The number of people we do monthly, uh, quarterly surveys. So I have basically like a piece of paper at the desk, a and counter. I have everyone <laughs> basically counts okay. all week how many reference transactions, how many people came in the door, how many programs you had. How many People came to this, that, how many okay. people used Yeah, did you see the really too? Remember that? Yes, we yes. did, but that thing, it stopped working. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> so and we have not re replaced it. But we, we do it manually, and we do it once per quarter. So we do it like in the busy time in the summer, we do one in the fall, one in the spring. Kind of, you know, makes sense to then take those numbers and, you know, make an approximation for the year based on. Mm -hmm. On those numbers, and it's it's fun too. It's kind of cool to see it in real time um, and get everybody on board with helping with that, which is kind of fun. Um, jumping to our current statistics, just to give you an idea, <laughs> I thought this is really kind of funny. So last month, our circulation where are our minutes? Our circulation last month in June was. Um, 5,146, our circulation for July was 6,391. Oh, wow. So we went over 1,000 more than the previous month. Our network transfers were 4,265, and we saved our community approximately $80,000 in the past month. It's been a busy, busy summer. <laughs> 
But yeah. it's really cool to see, you know, getting to kind of compare everything over just, you know, month to month and then getting to see that whole year as compared to the whole year before. Uh, people are definitely using the resources. I yeah. think people need the library, you know, especially more than ever, to save some money. Mm -hmm. um, I know I can't go to Barnes & Noble without dropping at least 50 bucks, so I can't imagine. But that's like <laughs> for families of young children. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's why they depend on the library, too. Yeah. yeah. You know? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is there a place where you have a list of all the passes that are available through the library? We do. It's on our website. Okay. There is a drop down menu where you can, um, you can okay. pull that up on our website. I do have a paper form of it also that I need to update. But I do have paper forms and on the website. Because okay. we do have some really great passes. We just added Mass Mocha, and the Emily Dickinson House now has a pass. So you can oh, wow. check that out. Yeah, so we've got a lot of new stuff. Mass Mocha, I said that already. Um, what's the other one? Norman Rockwell? We have him too. Eric Carl. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a lot. Museums, yeah. Children's Museum, all that stuff. Historic Deerfield, we've had them forever. So there's a lot um, that people can take advantage of that definitely helps offset costs for them. Um, any questions about the statistics? Sounds like um, this past month was like the highest it's been. Yeah, at. this past month definitely. I'd be interested to see what August is um, in comparison to what July was. Yeah, because that was definitely. It's been busy. We've been keeping uh, on our yeah, toes. I noticed there was tons of cars in July. A lot of because we had, you guys had some great programs. Yes. Do you think the programs really brought people in and kept them? Anyone out. Definitely. I know like having the children's, we have the nature story times, we have that bug yeah. hunt, lots of fun okay. stuff. Um, and then we even have like some of the adult programs too brought a lot of people that don't normally come to our library, which was nice, people getting new library cards, which can be insane while well, the program is happening, where like everyone's getting library cards at the same time, but it's, um, it's worth it. It's, it's a lot of fun to get okay. new people in the door that are like, oh, well, I've never even been here before. Well, where have you been? <laughs> You're here now. <laughs> but yeah, it's been it's been really good. It's been a, definitely a good summer. Um, I will be holding a staff meeting to discuss those stats with my staff to kind of give them a little bit of feedback and give them some ideas about where they might want to take their collection or um, you know if they would like want to add more magazines or whatever they might want to look at that. We'll be talking about that, the importance of pulling those holds that come through um, because that number, the non-resident number, has a lot to do with the, the holds that we pull for people to come in and to go out. Um, and then also I will make sure that they also do their ethics training because that's a requirement for them as well. And um, yeah, so I'll be having a nice little meeting, a little end of summer meeting, I think, with the staff to make sure that I touch on all those points with them too. Is it just your, just the staff, or does it include the volunteers? I'll probably just do the um, main staff, and then maybe do the volunteers on a one by one basis. It's really oh, hard to get oh. them all in at once. Yeah, yeah. Those volunteers, they stagger, <laughs> <laughs> which is good. That's what how we want it. Um, but I'll probably give them all a little rundown and, and explain it to them too, so yeah. that they kind of understand the importance of pulling the paging holes, um, getting those items out. Um, but yeah, we'll be doing all of that. That's on my agenda for the next week. Um, what about the um, the air conditioning? Are they going to? Yes. Yeah, so they fixed the in. dehumidifying unit, which was why the air conditioning wasn't working. Yeah. It was just like all that condensation was getting trapped, yeah. and then it was raining in the building. They've since fixed that yeah. as of last Thursday slash Friday, um, and now they just um, have to reopen the. It's kind of confusing, but you have to like turn the boilers on to keep things from getting too cold. Um, so that should be, Jeremy's gonna keep an eye on that. He said he'd get back to me to make sure that it all 
works properly. Oh, okay. It's a saga. It's an ongoing it's saga, a always. It's building. It'll be showing it. You know, yeah. You're told yeah. by the time we get a face, I'll turn it on again, and you'll be ready to kill me. <laughs> Should Jeremy's not out. Um, but he's back. Yeah, he is back. He's not, and I don't think at full capacity, but he's back, you know, kind of getting things going again. Yeah, it's good like to hear. desk work? Yeah, basically, basically yeah. coming in and out, but not heavy lifting or anything yeah. manual. So that's been really good, having him back. It's okay. nice to know the, the, what they're doing. Yeah, and I did want to speak about um, the solar pump. Oh, yeah. um, yeah. James White, uh, I spoke to him, and he said he's going to come out and check it out. We might have to just buy buy the pump and then just have him replace it. But I asked him to make sure, you know, that he knew we had a budget and we want to pay for it. So I hope, you know, and I said it's, you know, nothing that's really pressing, so he gets to it. Okay. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Another great resource. They've been wonderful to us. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, we'll keep us posted. Keep me posted. Um. Let me see. Oh, so oh, we want to do the warrants. Your yes. your director's report is all. Yeah, my director's report's done. Um, we have three warrants. Um, one for $964.68 for fire detection systems, Baker and Taylor, Bayscan and Dempo. There's one for $1,798.26 for Baker and Taylor, Blackstone Publishing, and Midwest Tape. And then the third one is $2,319.08 to Go Net Speed, Baker and Taylor, H.W. Wilson, Scholastic, and The Horn Book. Anybody want to make a motion to accept the warrants? Make a motion to accept the warrants as presented by the director. No, second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 You realize we get go we have go net speed here. Yes, that is actually for so the what is that copper for? wire phone lines that our um, fire detection system runs through. Oh, oh. So we, oh okay. That's the only thing we there's no for. internet through that or right. nothing like Our that internet's all through um comcast and um this new company you just spoke of didn't you say they're, they're the it company okay. that services it all <laughs> okay <laughs> but they don't provide the service that's on comcast and crocker through mass broadband um we have a lot happening they yeah this, they know what they're doing yeah <laughs> it's a lot Um, can I mention something about this? Um, this is from Jean because we ended up um, talking about uh, getting her a gift card or certificate for over at well, class grass for yeah. when her sister passed away. Mm -hmm. So um, she ended up giving sending something for the trustees for us. Um, just a thank you card. Your thoughtfulness means m much more than words can say. Thank you for so much for your kind gift. It means a lot to me and my family. We will be purchasing a tree for our yard in memory of my sister. With much appreciation, Jean. So, that was very nice. And along those lines, I wanted to see about with Lauren McIntyre, who passed away, who was our um, president of the Friends Committee, to see if there's something that we could do for her in her memory. I was trying to think of something, but I didn't know if we could all think of something. ideas however not in the sense of what you're suggesting I think yeah so we had um talked about it at our friends meeting um oh, okay gosh and it was 
something about she had a list of books she wanted to read? Yeah, so she, um, I spoke with her best friend Colleen, and in speaking with her, she said that um, Lauren did have wishes that any donations in lieu of flowers be made to the friends of the library. So that, that setup that's um, happening now. Um, and uh, she also wanted her entire book collection donated to the library, which I told Colleen not to rush to take her time with that, um, that we would take them and put them to use either in the collection or to the book sale, which will go to the friends. Um, and then my idea was to go on, um, Lauren and I are friends on Goodreads, and on Goodreads you can see someone's to be read pile, we call it their TBR pile, so there are books that they had intended to read. Um, and I thought, well, wouldn't it be kind of cool to have like a community shelf, like a community table or shelf for Lauren that had those books on there that people could come and take one and help us finish Lauren's TBR pile. Um, with that like was, a, a little, not plaque, but like a sticker inside the book, like when you do it in memory yes, of somebody. exactly. Yeah. Um, and then have kind of like a, uh, something people could sign that said that they read this book in honor of Lauren, oh, whatever, that. even have like That's a little great. shelf named after her. Um, where we could have that going because I didn't realize at the time that Lauren had like 900 and something books <laughs> and so I was like oh <laughs> well okay um, of course she did because she was Lauren and she loved reading and um, you know I kind of feel like that's going to happen to me too someday I'm going to have this epic list of books that I never got to finish and I think that's just going to happen and it's okay um but I thought it would be kind of neat to have that be a way that the community can help us in remembering, you know, remembering her. One thing I was thinking, if the trustees wanted to have like a contribution or a part in it, I was thinking about maybe having like a little plaque, just like a tiny one, put on one of the shelves to say like Lauren's shelf. We could call it Lauren's shelf, and that's something that the trustees would like to do to fund that part of it. So that there's kind of like a collaboration, mm. you know, we could do that. I think it's a great idea. Mm. I do too. Yeah. I make a motion that we um, fund mm -hmm. the purchase price of a bookshelf plaque in Lauren's name. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 That would be a nice way to honor her. Yeah. yeah. I'll get some pricing and, and things, but they're they're typically not um, super expensive. So, I'm sorry. Who seconded that? Uh, Helen. 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 Okay. Thank you. Too many hats on the ones here. Okay. I think that would be that would be really nice. Then we can have it just be an ongoing thing, you know, kind yeah. of a cool way for people to to remember her. So you know which book she has on her list? Yeah, I've got the whole list on my Goodreads, yeah. Yeah. It's just so incredible. She read so much. Like, I was always so jealous of how much reading she got done. Um, what did she like? She liked a lot of, like, summary books, historical fiction. She she loved a lot of everything. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to find her really quickly on here, but... She was just amazing at how much she read. And um, it always had to be like the first one on the list for the summer books. Here, here she is. Um, is that an app to be read? It is. It, well, it's um, the Goodreads app the Goodreads is the... App. the um, I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> right? <laughs> I know, but she, she had a book on here that she was currently reading. And her want to read list is 999 books, and I'm oh guessing that's only because they probably count it at that. <laughs> that it probably would have been more if, if it allowed her to have more. Um, but she was really big into like Ellen Hildebrand, mm. all the summary light um, books, light reading. Yeah, I actually even got her into Feel good reading, like a dragon, you know, fantasy. She just read everything. She. So cool. So I will have that kind of ongoing, and I have one to donate 
afford it, but I got a signed copy of um, Catherine Newman's Sandwich. I got it from the oh. Barnes & Noble in um, Hadley. She's actually from Amherst, the author that wrote that. And I wasn't going to read it, and then I picked it up because it was on Lauren's list, and I ended up crying, and I was like, mm. <laughs> yeah. of course, of course, this is the one that makes me cry. Um, but yeah, so just, I think it would be a really fun project. Yeah. So yeah, I, I met her um, at like the first book group when it started here at the Grammy Library. What was it back in 2012, maybe like somewhere like around there? Yeah. Um, and and I just remember like coming in and we would have our book group, and she would say, oh, "I kind of kind of can't remember." the finite details because I ended up reading like four or five of the books in, in like yes. the, the course of a month. And I'd just be like, what? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> yeah, incredible. I, I can't do that either. Like I have to read that book right before a book group otherwise. Yeah, yeah. yeah she, she was fantastic. And intelligent, yeah. yeah. Oh, did anybody have anything other to add? for tonight's meeting? Not that. No. Look at us. We didn't do too, too bad tonight. If we didn't freeze in this building. Right. <laughs> my feet are cold, though. I was going to say, my feet are cold, and my nose is cold. <laughs> right, it's a little chilly, but we survived. You've got a winter jacket on. <laughs> I know. Well, do we still have policies that we wanted to, like, kind of go through for... Uh, like starting, I don't know, maybe September, October. I will take a look. That, I'm sure we do. Um, that I'm may sure be useful too. We can get back into. Um, I'm working go, on going through the policies. Yeah. Working on our financial report. So there's the statistical report to the state, and then look immediately before it's even due, they put out the financial one, which isn't really fair. Um, that one's due in October, but I'm going to start it sooner than later to try to knock it out of the park so that we can get that discussed and then we can start on policies. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'll definitely- Yeah, when, when, uh, when it's not overload for you. Awesome, yeah, so. definitely. I think um, we're, we were in the midst of working on a disaster preparedness plan that we never really got that finalized. So um, we can start there. Okay. I'll put on here September, October. Yeah. And uh, we can get started on that. I think it's it's, it's probably time. Yeah. It'll be a fun. Yeah, we can hold, hold off till October to so that you know you can get the other stuff uh, buttoned up. Perfect. Sounds good. Give us a fun little project to do for the winter. Okay. <laughs> Uh, would anybody like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll make at a motion to adjourn the meeting at uh, oh, 648, 49. 648? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Anybody want a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Well, thank you, Nita, for joining us remotely. Oh, no, you're good. Thanks for popping on. <laughs> we're, we're glad to, to hear from you. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. Bye. 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 All right. Two last tomatoes. <laughs>